In this demonstration we're going to look at how the Earth circuit works using our wonderful Earth model here. Here we have a rather small person with a light bulb in their stomach. We have him holding an extremely large kettle made out of metal and that's attached to an absolutely enormous plug, um, clearly not to scale. And the person standing on the ground which is connected to the Earth and the Earth wire. These three wires here which are just off the edge of the screen, go off to our power station. So what we're going to do is look at situation one. When everything is normal, there is no fault present. So what we have here is we have the neutral wire, we have the earth wire, and we have the live wire in the plug, we have a fuse, and in the live wire we have a switch. And we'll look at why we have a switch in the live wire in a moment. We turn the switch on, and it's quite difficult to see, but there's a heating element here, and we should be able to see in a few minutes that it starts to glow orange. And while that's heating up, I'll carry on describing what's happening. But let's have a think about the electrical current. So the first thing is that current flows along the live wire through here. And I've actually got my kettle is 2.4 kilowatts. I'm working at 240 volts mains. I'm not actually working at that in my model, obviously, because that would be dangerous. So I'm going to get 10 amps of current flowing. And where does that 10 amps go? Well, it goes through the fuse. It comes along the brown wire, it comes along the flex, and it flows into the kettle. That 10 amps flows through the switch, through the heating element, which is now glowing quite red hot, and it flows back along the neutral wire, and back out through the plug, and back to the power station. There is no current flowing through the person. He's quite happily touching the kettle. We can tell that because the bulb's not lighting up. The kettle's working, everything's good. How is this able to work? Well, the live and neutral are completely isolated from the metal kettle. So neither the live or the neutral are connected to the person. So that's our first situation, everything normal. Here we are again now in situation number two. This is described as very bad. The reason why this is very bad is not immediately obvious, but if you look over here, the earth wire is being removed from the plug. So this model now represents somebody using a domestic appliance without the earth wire. And the second thing that's going to happen is there's going to be a fault occurring. And what the fault is going to do is it's going to be a short circuit represented by this short piece of wire. And it's going to connect the connections of the heater to the metal case of the kettle. And you might say that this is not a very likely situation, but it is because the kettle element might crack and the water would connect it to the metal case of the kettle. So let's have a look first of all what happens if we connect the live, uh, sorry, the earth and the neutral wire. Well, you should notice there that actually nothing happens whatsoever. There are still 10 amps coming in, there are still 10 amps flowing through the live wire, the heating element is still very hot, there's 10 amps flowing through the neutral wire. Why is no current flowing down to earth? That's the question. And why is no current flowing through the person even though they're now connected to one of the terminals? Well, the reason is because the neutral wire is kept at a very low voltage, nominally earth voltage. At the power station over here, you can just about see in the corner of the picture, the neutral wire is actually connected to the earth. So the neutral wire and the earth, all but a few volts difference, are effectively the same voltage. So there's no excess current flowing through there. However, if we now connect the earth wire and the live, what you'll see is that the person now lights up. Now, this is not a good situation. The person's basically being electrocuted. Let's see how much current's flowing. Well, clearly, there is still some current flowing through the kettle, 10 amps, 10 amps in, 10 amps out. There must be some extra current flowing through the person. They have a high resistance, so it's only a very small amount of current, 10 milliamps. Let's see where that 10 milliamps is coming from. Well, it's coming through the live wire. It's coming along the live wire. But instead of going back along the neutral wire, it's now going through the person, down to ground, and along the earth wire. So what's happening here is that enough current, 10 milliamps of significant current, is flowing through the person, electrocuting them. A couple of interesting points to notice. The current through the fuse has not increased by very much at all. 10 milliamps, it's a tiny increase. That fuse isn't going to blow. So a fuse without an earth wire does not protect you against being electrocuted. The excess current flowing through your body is not enough to break the fuse. 
So if you've got a fuse, you feel protected, then make sure you've got an earth wire too, because clearly without the earth wire, it's not doing anything very useful. The other thing to notice is that the current now in the live wire and the neutral wire are not the same. If this um, domestic situation had a, a residual current breaker fitted, the residual current breaker would detect the difference between the live and the neutral wires and it would turn off the circuit. But we haven't got one fitted. The person's being electrocuted. While I've been talking, he's probably died. So let's have a look at situation number three. So here we are in situation number three. What's happened here is, is as it should be, a fault is going to occur, but the earth wire is now being reconnected. The very sensible electrician has connected the earth wire properly. Everything's good. So let's have a look and see what happens. We connect a fault from the earth wire connecting the neutral. And as before, nothing's happened. There's no current flowing. The person is not electrocuted. The kettle still works. Everybody's happy. But if we now connect the earth wire to the live wire, if we watch the fuse over here quite carefully, we'll see as soon as we connect it, there's a little flash. The fuse is broken. The kettle's gone off. But essentially, and most importantly, the person is not being electrocuted. Let's see what happened in that case. Well, we connected the live, which is at a high voltage, to the earth, which has a very low resistance, and therefore a large current was able to flow through the earth wire. That large current has to have come from somewhere. Well, where did it come from? Well, it came along the live wire. The live wire delivered current to the kettle and a large current down to earth through this earth wire. So we've got a very large current flowing up here. And we've got a very large current flowing in here, like that. Okay. Now, this large current flowing through the fuse plus the 10 amps which is already flowing is now more than enough to break the fuse. So the reason the fuse works is because the earth wire was there. When the fault occurred, an extra large current flowed through the live wire. The extra large current flowing in the live wire also flowed through the fuse. The extra large current flowing through the fuse broke the fuse, isolating the circuit. The circuit's now disconnected. Everybody's safe. So the, the point is here but in actual fact, what you've got is, if I get the, use these labels, what you've got is a fuse only works when there's an earth wire because the earth wire allows a very large current to flow to earth and that large current is enough extra current to break the fuse. Therefore, the person doesn't get electrocuted. They also don't get a cup of tea because the kettle's gone off. But there you go. Let's, now we've looked at the earth circuit and how the fuse protects you, let's just spend a few moments to look at a couple of notes here. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the switch. And I said earlier in the video we'd look at why the switch is in the live wire. So the question is, why is the switch in the live wire? Well, here's the switch just here. And here's the live wire. Here's the element glowing red hot as it was before. The current's flowing through the live wire through this switch, through the element, and back along the neutral wire. So it appears that we should be able to put the switch in the live or the neutral wire. And in terms of turning the kettle on and off, we could. We could put the switch in either wire, but we don't. Remember I said the neutral wire is effectively tied down to ground. It's, it's connected to earth at the power station. So it will only ever be a, a few volts, 10 volts, 20 volts, something like that, above earth. So it's unlikely to electrocute you. The live wire, on the other hand, is oscillating at 240 volts, um, above and beneath the earth potential of zero and therefore this is the one which is going to electrocute you. So the reason we have the switch in the live wire is because the live wire is the one which is at the, the voltage that is high enough to electrocute you. So we have the switch just here so when we turn it off and it's the first thing that occurs in the, in the wire, okay, so that now when we touch the element if we wanted to we wouldn't get electrocuted. So the switch is in the live wire because the live wire is the wire at such the high voltage. Secondly, let's have a look at the fuse. Does the fuse have any other use other than preventing electrocution in conjunction with the earth wire? Well, yes, it does. Let's have a quick look at what current we have flowing along here. So we have our 10 amps flowing in our wire that way, and we have our 10 amps flowing through the kettle and then back along the neutral wire that way. If a fault were to occur, 
which instead of connecting to earth, and therefore it's no danger for the person holding the kettle, but actually just connected the live to the neutral, as I'm doing here with a slightly longer piece of green wire. Watch the fuse again and see what happens. And the fuse melts. Right, why should that happen? Well, the fault that I've added, this extra piece of wire here which I've added, has a much lower resistance than the heating element, so the current increases. So now we have a large current flowing in the um, live wire, and we have a large current flowing back again along the neutral wire. Now notice in this case that the current is the same in both the live and the neutral wire, so a residual current device would not have protected us or would not have tripped. So why should this be a problem? Why did the fuse blow? Well, the fuse blew because we had this extra large current flowing through the fuse, but we also had that extra large current flowing through the wire. And of course, if we allowed that current to carry on, then the wire would have done what the fuse did. It would have got hot, like the heating element. Now, if that wiring is inside the walls of your house, you don't really want it glowing red hot. It's going to cause a fire. So the reason the fuse the, the other reason the fuse is included in the circuit is because if you get a fault which connects the live to a neutral, the very large current that results could result in the wiring catching fire, but the fuse blows to stop that. This is particularly important when you get double insulated devices which have plastic cases and therefore they don't actually have an earth wire because you can't touch the metal, so you can't get electrocuted by touching the metal. However, they still have a fuse so that this large current can't flow melting the cabling. The last point I'm going to talk about ACDC, just a, a tiny point. In my diagram, I've used arrows in one direction. I've used red and black wires, to sim which is what we normally use for DC. In the domestic situation, it's an AC current, alternating current. So the current will be flowing backwards and forwards along the live wire, backwards and forwards along the neutral wire. The, exactly the same arguments apply. It makes no difference whether you're using AC or DC in terms of how the fuse and the earth wire works. So I've talked in terms of DC because it's simpler, but the AC situation is what you actually have in the home. However, that situation is exactly the same. The live wire oscillates at plus or minus 240 volts above and beneath zero volts. The neutral wire remains at essentially zero volts. So the arguments are exactly the same. And you still don't get a cup of tea because the fuse is blown again. This is ridiculous.